Hey guys, it's Sarah, and today I have an empties video. Lots of stuff to get through here. Believe it or not, I actually have a lot of makeup to get through this time around. So first I have the e.l.f. HD powder in Soft Luminance. I've talked about this so much on my channel. I love this powder. It's a loose powder. I would mainly use this to set my under eyes, but I also really like it as an all-over setting powder. I feel like it just, it's very lightweight. It doesn't look super powdery, but it sets everything down and it gives a slightly luminous finish. It's nothing super, super glowy or anything. However, if you do look up close at this powder, you will see the tiniest little shimmer particles. So if that sounds like a a no-go for you, then you would definitely want to skip this. I know some people don't love that. Personally, I didn't mind it, and I didn't feel like those shimmer particles really showed up that obviously on my skin. Maybe if I look up really close in like natural light, I might see some, but I, it didn't bother me at all. But if you prefer something completely matte, you probably would want to skip this one. I have so many lash <laughs> products in this empties video. Usually I would only have one mascara, if any, in an empties, but I have two mascaras, and a lash primer. So first, this is the Urban Decay Lash Freak Mascara. I got this in PR, but this is a pretty pricey mascara. It's $25 for the full size. They also have a mini size for like 12 or 13. I really wanted to test and see how long I could make this tube last. So I opened this in about mid-July, and I was able to keep it open until mid-November. So that's four months. I was hoping I could stretch it out six full months, but it was just kind of getting to the point where I could keep using it, but it was just getting harder to coat my lashes. And I did put eye drops in twice to stretch it out even longer. So I would say you could probably get a good three to four months out of this. I really, really like this mascara. It's gotten some mixed reviews. If you look at it on Ulta's website, it only has three stars, which is pretty low. It has this really strange wand. There's no bristles on one side. The other side has these like two rows of bristles, and then it has this sort of ball tip on the end, and it is a rubber bristle wand. Um, as opposed to a more natural bristle style wand. So definitely not for everybody. The first time I used this, I thought I was gonna hate it because it seemed super, super clumpy in my lashes. You kind of have to give it a few days of use to really get it to its prime, but this gives the most insane <laughs> volume and length. If you like the Flower Lash Warrior mascara or that type of mascara, this is like, Flower Lash Warrior on steroids. So it's a little bit high maintenance. Like it can be a little bit messy. Sometimes if you're not careful, you'll end up getting some on your eyelid or something and you have to clean it up. It's a it's an intense mascara. It's very extreme, but I love that and I will really miss this. I would repurchase this if it's maybe on sale. I'm gonna kind of keep an eye out for it in like the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale. I also may buy like the mini size because I did really, really enjoy this, and I'm usually not a high-end mascara person, but this one was good enough that I would consider buying it with my own money if it's on a good sale. Okay, the other mascara I finished is the CoverGirl Clump Crusher Extensions Mascara. There is also a CoverGirl Clump Crusher regular mascara, not the extensions version. Some people have told me that this one and the regular Clump Crusher are pretty much the same. Some people have also told me that they're different, so I don't know. Based on my experience with this, I don't think I would care to try the regular Clump Crusher if it's anything like this because I just, this was so, so underwhelming to me. Um, I really, really like this style of brush. It's a spiky curved brush, which normally I love curved brushes. It just gives a very, very natural lash effect. And I've had some people tell me that they love this mascara for the same reasons that I don't love it, so. It gives a little bit of length. It mostly kind of just coats and separates your lashes. So what I ended up mainly using this for was as a lower lash mascara, just because it's very easy to maneuver into the lower lashes, whereas the lash freak I was using is a little bit trickier to use on the lower lashes. So that's what I used this for, and it worked just fine, but for my top lashes, it didn't really do anything that special, and I don't really feel the need to have a dedicated lower lash mascara. Normally, I just think that's a little excessive. So wasn't really a fan of that. I will say though, it didn't really ever like flake or smudge. So, you know, you might love this, just saying, but it was not for me. And that's coming from someone who loves very dramatic lashes. And then I have the CoverGirl Lash Blast Amplify Primer. So this is a white lash primer. I had never tried a lash primer before. So this was my first and honestly, probably my last lash primer. I kind of just realized with this that I don't like having to go to the extra step of applying a lash primer. If my mascara isn't already doing everything it's supposed to be doing, then 
too bad, I guess. I don't really need an extra layer of stuff on my lashes. The mascaras that I love do a perfectly fine job on their own. So this also, I just didn't feel like it did anything. If anything, maybe it added a little bit of extra volume. So I kind of just used it to use it up. I also finished a lip liner. This is the e.l.f. doesn't have a name on it, but it has a liner, a retractable liner, and a brush, actually, a lip brush on the other end. I don't think they sell this anymore. This was in the shade Dusty Rose, and I loved this color. This was a beautiful dusty rose, very kind of neutral, rosy shade. I, I feel like I went through this really fast, though. I think I only bought this at the beginning of 2020, and I wasn't even really trying to use it up until a couple months ago I realized I didn't have much left, and I was like, well, I guess I'll just kind of unofficially project pan this until it's done, and it is now done. Um, I guess my review doesn't really matter because it's, you can't, I don't think you can buy it anymore, but this was a nice lip liner. For my project pan, I finished the Ulta Hydrating Face Primer. This is a mini size of that, and I really enjoyed this face primer. It's just kind of a lightweight, sort of hydrating feeling primer. It has a little bit of a sticky dry down to it, which makes me think maybe it kind of holds on to your makeup better, but I'm not really the best person to judge a primer for like staying power because I just don't really struggle with staying power as it is. But yeah, this was a nice hydrating primer if you, can, if you ever can get your hands on a sample size or if you can get it on sale, I would recommend it. But full price, it's like 17 or 18 dollars, which is just so expensive for basically a drugstore brand primer. So um, yeah, I'd only recommend it on on a good sale. I have actually two tools that I'm retiring. One of them is the e.l.f. I think this is called their Total Face Sponge. It's the kind of magenta colored one. I really enjoyed this sponge. I had it for way too long. I'm terrible, but I really enjoyed this sponge. It's shaped very similarly to the Real Techniques sponge. Nice and soft. It's very porous. Like if you look up close, it's, it's a lot more porous looking than other sponges. I didn't really mind that though. I felt like it worked really well and I felt like it didn't uh, soak up too much product. So I would consider repurchasing this. I think it's like $5, so pretty cheap. But at the same time, I also like trying new sponges. I also love the EcoTool sponge. I like the Real Technique sponge. I, I haven't met a lot of sponges that I didn't like, so. Also from e.l.f. I have their complexion brush. This has gotten so old that I think it's just ready <laughs> to go. The handle has kind of come loose from the ferrule and I know I could glue it back down, but I've washed this so many times that the bristles have kind of started to become a little bit scratchy. Didn't used to be that way. That is one downside to e.l.f. brushes. I love e.l.f. brushes, but just recently, the ones that I've had for a long time have started to just get kind of kind of old, and I do notice that the bristles get scratchy as I've had them for longer. So I'm looking at investing in some pricier brushes. I did put some Sigma brushes on my Christmas list, so may get those. If not, I, I'm going to look into just buying slowly. I'm not going to buy like a huge brush set, but maybe just as my brushes die, <laughs> I might just start replacing them with slightly nicer ones that are going to last longer. Um, that's not to say I don't still love e.l.f. brushes, but I'd like to probably invest in some brushes that are going to last longer and hopefully save me money in the long run. So that's all the makeup. Now I have skincare. So I'm gonna get this one out of the way because this one is so messy. <laughs> this is the Derma E Universal Cleansing Balm. I really enjoyed this cleansing balm, except for the fact that it's so messy. It's just constantly, there's always like a greasy film all around the packaging no matter what. But this uh, was really, really nice. It has kind of a citrusy scent to it, so just keep that in mind if you uh, don't like scented cleansers. This I would just use as my first cleanse. It comes with a little spatula. I would just scoop a little bit out with that spatula and rub it all over my face, all around my eye area, and then rinse it off with water. This one emulsifies pretty well. Sometimes I would go in with a little like reusable makeup round and uh, get rid of some of the leftover eye makeup, but overall it would do a really good job just removing everything and I didn't feel like it stung my eyes or it didn't leave like a weird cloudy film in my eyes like some kind of oil cleansers will. Um, and then I would go in with a regular cleanser afterwards to remove anything left over. So I would definitely recommend this and I would repurchase it, although I do want to try some more cleansing balms before I do repurchase it just because I like trying new things. Now my hands are a greasy mess. Next I have the Paula's Choice 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliant. I swear I get an ad on YouTube for this 
almost every day. It's so annoying. It's like, what if you could get glowing skin overnight? I went foundation free for the first time in ever. Anyone who gets that ad, I'm sure, was just mouthing it along with me. Anyway, so this is a 2% salicylic acid liquid that you can apply either with a cotton round or just with your hands. I tried applying this with my hands and no cotton round and my hands got so dry and were peeling for days which is weird because it doesn't dry out my facial skin at all, but I was not able to apply this with my hands, unfortunately. Either way though, this lasted me a really long time applying it with like reusable cotton rounds. Um, I think I've had this since like March of this year and it just now ran out, so it's a pretty good value. I enjoyed this one, but I like the one in the blue bottle a little bit better. That's the one in their clear line. It's also a 2% salicylic acid, but for whatever reason, I just felt like I got slightly better results with that one. So that's the one that I plan on repurchasing. I'm trying to wait until they have some sort of Black Friday sale, which will be like a week from now. And then I have to wait for it to ship. I don't know if I can wait that long, but I'm really trying. Um, right now, I'm just using like a mini Sunday Riley UFO that I had. And that one is all, it also has salicylic acid in it, but it's a lower percentage. And I just really miss having my BHA liquid. So... I'm struggling right now, but <laughs> we'll make it through, I think. But yeah, I really do think that incorporating a BHA liquid in my routine makes a huge difference, and uh, I don't think I'll ever be without one of the Paula's Choice BHAs because my skin just responds to it so well. I also finished, this was in my skincare project pan, the e.l.f. Hydrating Serum. This was fine. I don't think I'd repurchase it. A, because I don't like how excessive the packaging is, but B, I just felt like this was like a lightweight lotion, you know? This is a purified water, aloe, and green tea. This doesn't do anything that a good moisturizer that I'm already using doesn't already do. Does that make sense? I said already too many times. I feel like it gives a little bit of a glow to my skin. It does kind of give my skin a little extra boost of hydration, but... It just doesn't really feel like something I need to repurchase. An SPF I finished was the Verse Guards Up Daily Mineral Sunscreen. This has SPF 35 and this is a zinc oxide based sunscreen. I I've said before, this is my favorite mineral sunscreen that I've tried to this day. It's a little bit pricier. It's definitely not high end price, but it's also not really drugstore price. It's like $22 but it's so good <laughs> that I'm willing to spend a little bit more because I'm actually going to want to wear it every day. It doesn't mess with my makeup. It's very kind of skin-like. Like it's not a very glowy sunscreen, but it's also not matte and it is tinted. So to me, I'm not sure if the tint would work on any skin tone. They claim that it will. To me, the tint is a lot more transparent than other tinted mineral sunscreens that I've tried. So that does lead me to think it would work for a lot more skin tones. So I would absolutely repurchase this. Um, I'm not sure when exactly because again, I like to try new things, but I would definitely see myself repurchasing this in the future. I also finished in my skincare project pan, the niacinamide and zinc from The Ordinary. This is their niacinamide 10% plus zinc 1%. Just finished this last night. This is really nice. I do feel like my skin responds well to niacinamide. I'm curious though, I'm gonna try to go without it for a while and see if I feel like I need to repurchase it or if my BHA kind of takes care of everything I need it to. So basically it's meant to, I think it's meant to brighten and also kind of even out texture. It's supposed to be good for acne prone skin. I have felt like this is one of those products that really does make a noticeable difference for my skin, but I'm gonna see if I can get away with going without it. And if not, I would definitely repurchase it. So I'll keep you updated on that. The one body care item that I finished up is the Giovanni Hot Chocolate Sugar Scrub. I love this body scrub. I'm not usually big on body scrubs, but this one, it smells like an actual cup of hot chocolate with marshmallows on top. Like, incredible. I want to eat it. That's how good it smells. It's also just a really nice texture of body scrub. I know some body scrubs will just like make a huge mess in my bathtub, but this one would rinse so nicely. I would never have a mess in my shower, and it rinses off of your skin really really easily. It's also, it's not too thick and gritty, but it's also not thin and watery. It's just like this perfect almost like gel texture and it's just so easy to use, so pleasant to use, smells amazing, it just feels so good on your skin. And I know physical exfoliants are not supposed to be great for your skin. I don't use physical exfoliants on my face, 
but I just really enjoy using them on my body. I feel like they help a lot with, if I'm gonna be shaving my legs, I use a scrub beforehand. It helps me kind of get a closer shave. It helps avoid like ingrown hairs. And it's just like a pamper type of product for me. So I definitely will plan to repurchase this soon. All right, in a couple of household items, I finished the seventh generation hibiscus and cardamom hand wash. I don't like these seventh generation hand soaps. They don't smell that good. I feel like they all smell the same. So I don't think I'll repurchase the seventh generation hand soaps unless I have to. Also, once I finish up the hand soaps that I have, I'm gonna start making like a liquid hand soap that I can just refill bottles with, with like a, the Dr. Bronner's liquid soap that I have. I have like a big bottle of Dr. Bronner's. So I'm gonna try to stop buying the single use hand soap bottles just because it can get to be a lot. A candle that I finished, I pretty much always have a candle in my empties lately. This is the Huntington Home Frosted Vanilla Candle from Aldi. I love Aldi candles so much. That is an Aldi candle back there burning. That is their advent calendar candle, which I don't know if I fully understand how a candle can also be an advent calendar. Um, but it basically just has numbers 1 through 25 on there. So I don't know if you're just supposed to like cross off a number every day. It's not even December yet. I'm already burning it. But Aldi went haywire with the... not haywire. Hog wild. Aldi went crazy with the advent calendar themed everything. They have so many different advent calendars. They have a candle advent calendar. They have um, a cat treat advent calendar, which I bought. Duh. They have like kid ones, dog ones, like every everything you can imagine you can find in an advent calendar form at Aldi. So weird. I wonder if that's just this year. Oh, they had a hard seltzer advent calendar, which we thought about getting, but then we were like, that means we're going to be drinking every single day of December, which just does not sound like a good idea. So um, anyway, <laughs> sorry, that was a tangent. I think this is part of their holiday edition candles. They have a few different ones there. But this smelled really good. I love a good just vanilla candle. It smells so warm and cozy. I'd also, I think in my last empties video, I had just a regular vanilla candle. This one smells similar, but a little bit more like cupcake frosting. So, so if you can find that, I definitely do recommend it. These candles are like $4. So those are all my empties from the last month. I feel like that's a lot of stuff that I used up. And I will have more at the end of December. I'll probably have another regular empties at the end of December. And then I'll have a end of the year makeup empties, so all the makeup I used up in 2020 coming at the end of December as well. I'm so excited. Also, I just decided today I'm doing, well, I already knew I was doing some form of Vlogmas, but I've decided that I'm going to be uploading, if all goes according to plan, I'm going to be uploading every day of December. I'm, I'm like bracing myself because it sounds like a lot, but I think I can pull it off. Definitely make sure you're subscribed if you want to stick around for that. I'm so excited for holiday content. If you enjoyed this video, definitely make sure to give it a thumbs up. I'd love to see you again very soon and hopefully I will talk to you in my next video. Bye!